जय श्री माता जी वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन लेट एस ऑल बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडली एंड गिव अवर सेल्स अ बंधन लेट एस रिसाइड श्री गणेश मंत्र Let us place our right hand on our sahasra. And give it a little clockwise massage. माता जी लेट माई अटेंशन बी कंप्लीटली स्टेबल इन माई स्वस्थ
let us now listen to shamata ji's speech now the first center of agya which is this here then the vishuddhi chakra which is of the collectivity this is the center of the collectivity of the witness this one vishuddhi chakra is what i say of the american continent this one and then is the heart chakra here then is the nabhi then is the here at the back is the swadhisthana and in the center is the muladhara this is how we can cure people because everything comes within us from these centers our diseases our troubles our emotional problems all our physical problems our material problems all of them come from these centers and when their centers are out of order we get all these problems if you can put the kundalini through she awakens all these deities by which we get filled up and the power of all pervading power of that love of god goes on flowing all the time and we are no more in wanting and that is the time then we are not vulnerable to any of these attacks that are around us not only that once we get it we get the power of giving realization to another person now today i would say today is the last day in los angeles i must say the response was not uh, bad at all i was very happy because in the beginning was use of having the crowd so she have to have real special people who are in the foundation is a very good idea because you can prepare them <clears throat> we have an idea that one of the persons who has come from all the way from australia and his wife is dr reeves we must thank him to come all the way from australia to help me to establish this in this country that the australian should come all the way is very remarkable while australia is the muladhara is the first center so they have to come here between the first set there now they have come all the way here to help us out he is going to stay here i hope so for about 7 8 days or 10 days in here with dr varanikar in uh, he'll give you the address he is going to be here for the whole week or maybe a little more and you all should go to him and get yourself corrected get full idea about sah yoga and establish yourself you all can start a center of your own but at least every week you should meet in one place sunday evening doctor has agreed to have the program in his house you can listen to my tapes and you can understand about meditation how to give realization to others how to make them their own gurus because you become a guru now of course i need not say that you cannot charge money for this so we all can do it you all can become very powerful people like warren himself came to india he was there with me for about 2 months and after that he became such a big guru that he has now got seven centers established in seven cities in seven cities of australia so you can imagine what one can do if you get your realization and settle with it all of you are capable of it everyone each one of is capable only you have to work it out within the 7 8 days when we start now as we are now going to san francisco he'll be back here by the 20th and i hope you arrange it with dr varelika find out his place and once it is done then we can start having these centers in other places there he will tell you how to protect yourself how to raise your kundalini how to cleanse yourself what all things are to be done as far as you are concerned he will also tell you the collective how to work out for collectivity how to give realizations to another even today supposing you do not get realization doesn't matter it can be managed later on maybe that you might get it afterwards but how to do it how to establish it and how to work it out all these things he'll tell you and gradually so many secrets that we normally do not tell to the first people who come in he will tell you how to work it out this is how one light which is enlightened is going to enlighten another light and sahaj yoga is going to work out i hope next time when i come we'll have a much bigger much bigger exposure when you people will be ready to help me you will be the people who will know how to do it and you work it out so treat it as something important it's not one of the guru shoppings you have come here if you have come here please excuse me you do not waste my time but if you get your realization you must work it out if you cannot work it out no use working it for 
by doing this you will get rid of your problems of course no doubt physical emotional mental everything you'll get rid of but your attention should be on the collective working if you start working collectively the power will be more because god doesn't want to give you power nobody wants to have a light which doesn't give light why to repair a light which doesn't give light so you have to decide that you will be giving light to others once you decide that it will work very fast and all your problems will be solved which looks so simple and so superficial i would request you that you go into it talk to him and get your addresses and all that after realization we'll work it out i hope you'll make it convenient thank you very much have you any questions you ask because i am going away now so you can ask me some questions if you have why is there evil or why was evil created <laughs> and suffering evil was created by human beings god did not create when you started growing you had freedom in your freedom you created evil forces you wanted to have evil you are always attracted to what evil even now if there is an evil you will go to him much more than you will go to me because you have to become evil. then you just pay some money you are very happy as long as you give some money to the person as long as you pay and the person says all right i'll take you to heaven you will believe such a man because very easy convenient you know just pay the money in the slot you are there very good idea because of the ignorance of human beings they created it but you can get rid of it then this evil starts controlling other people who are trying to rise above yes it does it tries to attack and thus the evil grows if you are not strong it can attack it attacks and you take to it i don't know why human beings take to evil i just don't know i can't understand i i just can't understand even if i tell them after realization i've seen people go to it they are so much enamored by evil that you can't see what is it you have come from this matter and matter attracts you the deadening qualities attract you there i am i was told that there are some groups here which are working out your evolution downward you want to learn from animals you want to learn from fishes you want to become like animals what can help you because you are free god cannot get over your freedom he has granted it to you you have to respect it but you must respect also freedom doesn't mean license and if you do not respect your freedom you can go ahead with it what can you do he has given you freedom once granted you cannot take it back does kundalini combat the evil or what effect does it have on the evil when it becomes light the darkness goes away when you are enlightened darkness doesn't come it's not there you develop your discretion he will run up if he will comes to know that there is an enlightened person going it won't come absolutely there were three people who got realization in a village and they had such a work that they had to return home at about 12 o'clock in the night every night through a forest on a motorbike and the people who got sort of possessed in that area they started talking about it and they said that tell these people that at least don't come to the forest as it is we are there 
we have met these people, we are stay settled down there, now why do they want to come to the forest? You'll be surprised, they started talking about it. They are frightened of it, absolutely frightened. And they disappear into nothing when there is light. But we have to accept the light and not the darkness. You cannot do it, it happens. See, this is the basic thing I am telling you, that you cannot meditate, you get into meditation. It just happens. When the Kundalini rises, when she pierces through this center of Agya, she sucks in your ego and super ego. And you jump into the awareness, which is called as thoughtless awareness, called as Nirvichar Samadhi. Is the, we can say, explaining, explaining it like this, enlightened, thoughtless awareness, end light. Even with that, you can cure people. You may not be able to give realization, but you can cure people. But that's not important. What you have to do is to just get out. So you have to be in meditation. You cannot do meditation. You cannot do it. It's a living process. All right? Those people who say that you meditate, Better return them their money. They can only put you on to the left or to the right, by which you might get puzzles, you may start jump, jumping in your seats, you might get some troubles. That's what will happen. Actually, you feel it on top of your head. The Kundalini, you can feel it on top of your head coming out. Just it's a happening, a cool breeze come out of your head, which you cannot do. Even the pulsation of the Kundalini, in some people you can see. You can see the pulsation and the rising. If you have a stethoscope, you can feel the rising of the Kundalini. You can even feel the rising of the Kundalini here and the pulsation on top of your head. And then the cool breeze starts coming out here, from here, because Kundalini is the part and parcel of the whole, of that whole, which I am saying the all-pervading power. And you start feeling that root on top of your head, and you start feeling it around your fingers too. This you cannot do. You try anything. You can jump, you can dress up, you can wear some or, or, uh, what you call these pearls and things like that. You can wear some names and you can say some names or you can change your dresses and move about. You can shave your head. You can cut your tongues, cut your nose, do what you like. But you cannot make your Kundalini rise. That's a living process. It's like a seed sprouting, which is a living process. You cannot take out the premium from the seat, just pull it out, come along, come along, now I'm meditating, standing on my head. As soon as you put it to the Mother Earth, it works. It's built in, it's there. It's all, you are built in like this. It's all there. It's all done. Only thing is, at the time, when all these great incarnations came, they could not talk about it. I was surprised to read the Bible of Levi, when they have said it, that they, somebody is going to come and tell you all the multiple things about it. Have you got that book with you? It's very clearly said by him. It's prophesied. Any other question, please? What is this? What well, if you import is the uh, realization of yourself, right? Then I think what he's saying is when you get your realization, what is the effect on your own religion? Oh, your own religion is a myth. It's a myth to believe because you are born in a Christian family, you think you are a Christian, born in a Muslim, you think you are a Muslim. But after you get realization, what happens? You really become. You really become. Say you are a Muslim, you become a real Muslim. Then only you start feeling the namaz. Then you feel that the vibrations are coming. 
Before that, it's all a acrobat. You try all these tricks. Nothing happens. You pray, pray, pray to God. You even break all your knees. Nothing will happen. There was a gentleman who was a Muslim in India. He said, I was seeking God. First I was bending to God, praying to Him. All my knuckles went off. Then I went to this place. I said, no, God I cannot find. So he went to another religion. Then he went uh, singing songs of God, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, to one temple we have got there, Vithala's temple. He said, all my, I got so sick with that. Nothing happened. Then he went to Christianity, where he went and he did all the sorts of things the Christians do. He said, I never found God there. But when he found God, he has the meaning, because the religion without the light of your spirit is no religion, it's blindness, it's fanaticism. That's why they're fighting. It's like a dead flower. All these flowers are living flowers on the tree of life. Muhammad Sahib is a living flower. He is not anybody's property. Neither is Moses anybody's property. They are universal things. These people are taking a contract out of them. How can you? What right have you got? They got to take contract. On the contrary, Muhammad Sahib himself is angry. It is Moses who is angry. It is Christ who is angry with these people. What they have to do is to become the spirit and they will know where Muhammad Sahib resides, where Moses resides, where Christ resides, where are they placed, their integration and everything is to be seen. So stupid they are, like the other day somebody said that we don't believe in the immaculate conception of Christ because it is not possible. What is not possible for God? He can do anything he likes. All right, that's why in the Old Testament it is written that a girl will give birth, a girl will give birth to the Messiah. Now if it is prophesied a girl, so they said that it's written girl, not a virgin. I mean in those days they didn't have 80 year old virgins or girls, I mean they didn't have girls. Nowadays you will call anybody, she's my girl, she might have married 10 times. In those days girl meant a virgin. Now take logically, if you say that a girl is going to give a birth to the Messiah, that means one thing is definite, that a man is not going to give birth, is he? When they are saying that a girl is going to give, a woman is always going to give, so girl means something specific, something unusual, and that means that a virgin is going to give, but they will not. They will not accept. They want to judge God by their mental activity. Unless and until you are a realized soul, you cannot judge them. You have not been fair to them at all. We realize any God, which is the embodiment of compassion, rahmat. We realize the way people are killing in the name of God is the God who is the ocean of love, really like the way people are behaving towards each other. It's so contradictory. It's absolutely contradictory. It's contrasting with God. Everybody thinks, if you want to ask about a Jew, go and ask a Muslim. If you want to know about the Muslims, go and ask a Jew. They both think they are the wisest going around. Then if you want to ask about the Christians, go and ask them Hindu and if you want to ask about the Hindu, ask another sect, Jain. If you want to know about the Jains, there are Buddhists to tell about. How is it, if it is the truth, they should be all one? And the result of this is that the young people are giving up God now. People are selling churches in England. These fundamentalists are going to ruin completely the existence of religion. There was a boy from Algeria who came to us and he told that we are all becoming communists now, young people. All who are, I mean, the boys who have studied very well, who are, say, graduates and who are architects and doctors and all that, they are all becoming communists. I said, why? He said, because we see these fundamentalists coming in and they, the way they behave, they are stupid. We don't want to believe in them. So we are becoming communists. They want to deny God. I said, no, there is God. And when he got realization, he changed all of them. Five hundred of them changed. And they said, what is there in communism? That's also another mental activity, like these are. It's not the truth. God exists, but you must prove 
unless and until you prove God, your religion has no meaning. Nobody is going to believe it. After some time you will find it's all finished. Or they will finish themselves by fighting, quarreling and arguing. It's not a mental activity. Religion is something within yourself which is to be enlightened. You really become that when you get enlightenment. Any further questions? Yes. When the Kundalini uh, begins to rise, <coughs> um, do you ever feel a pain in the top of your head, like somebody pushing down or something, like a thumb pushing down on the top of your head? When Kundalini begins to rise, do you ever feel it as a pain on top of the head as if somebody is pressing their thumb hard on top of your head? Not that way. You may not. But actually with some people it could be the Kundalini is pressing it out, see, to come up. But normally she doesn't rise like that. She rises when you are absolutely ready for it. She comes up and goes down if you are not ready. She then stay there. This is not the way it would happen. Actually, you'll be surprised those who are getting the experience of Kundalini do not feel so much pain as the people who are helping them. It's like the person who is getting drowned doesn't feel so much of pain as the people who are saving them. It's like that. Because you are not collectively conscious before realization, the others also, they can feel it that the Kundalini poor thing is stuck up there. They can feel it. Not here. You don't feel anything. Actually, the person who is giving you realization suffers more than you suffer. It's a fact. It's a fact. You are perfectly all right. Nothing happens to you. Supposing there is a cancer patient. He comes to you and you start giving, uh, helping him out with raising his kundalini. Such heat will come out that you may have to run away now, outside in the open. The whole room will get heated up, but the fellow won't feel anything. He won't feel anything. It's only you who will be feeling it. It's like a person who is very dirty and filthy, used to it, you see. Doesn't feel the filth. The others feel it. It's like that. He's so much used to it. He doesn't feel anything. The others feel it. <laughs> That's how it is. Yes? yes. This gentleman has come out today only. He came before her. What is it? Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on the, the uh, That's what I'm going to do now, I know. You are very anxious. That's what one should I be anxious. That's like just like a seeker. Better have it. Must have it and then we'll talk about it. If you are hungry, what you will say? Mother, I'm hungry, let me have it. Alright? If you are not hungry, then you'll be going round and round and round and have to coax you. But everybody suffers, it's not being fair, is it? There's hardly any time left now, ten thirty we have to leave, better start.
let us recite the three great mantras Thank you, Shumata Ji, for this beautiful morning meditation. Let us all bow down to Shumata Ji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and give ourselves a bandhan. Let us continue with our morning meditation tomorrow morning, same time. Jai Shri Mataji.